I would love to hear from your point of view, Dr. Arguello, what, uh, what are some of the key questions a patient can a should ask um, should ask when they are in the chair doing the interview because we've talked about this before that that the patient is hiring the doctor the dentist the specialist Correct. we are the ones hiring the specialist so we have the right to interview and ask who we're going to because this is this is a big deal this is a life-changing event i'm glad you said that earlier so what would be some of those questions during the interview of the clinician side that you would recommend a patient should ask? I think the very first thing that patients should think about it will be uh, to look at the credentials of the, of the, of the clinician they're about mm -hmm. to see, right? Mm -hmm. Do a, uh, You don't have to be an extensive search, but you want to know where the clinician got trained, what is the qualifications. Now, let me make a pause in here because the qualifications of the clinicians, this treatment is broadly offered by the profession in general. It could be a general dentist, it could be a surgical prostodontist, it could be an oral surgeon, it could be a periodontist doing this procedure. And we have a very talented clinicians in all aspects, whether it's a general dentist, whether it's a prostodontist or any other member of the staff. Many people that perform these procedures are very highly qualified to do this. So. Okay. In our country, in America, we do not have um, isolation of who can perform this procedure. I'm a specialist and I'm specialized in surgery and I deliver, as, uh, along with my colleagues, the oral surgeons, deliver a surgical intervention for our patients. But this is not exclusive to us. This is not exclusive to any particular group of our profession. It's open to everybody. And as such, we had the opportunity to train clinicians in some of the education centers, uh, clinicians as uh, general dentists, prosthodontists, to train them in the surgical modality for them to be able to be proficient. So I think the initial question that you have to ask the dentist is, doctor, how comfortable are you to perform or performing this procedure? And have you done that many times in many patients? Clinicians are not necessarily always ready to answer that question. So it's a question that will catch the clinician off guard. Mm. And what when you, like this interview is not, we scripted. don't have any script or nope. anything else, right? Nope. <laughs> you are thinking the questions and I'm answering as you're coming shooting the questions, That's right? That's it, yeah. So, but as clinicians, we're not actors. And I think I mentioned this to you in the past. Yeah. We are not trained to perform on there for the camera. You know, this is a candid interview. Yeah. The interview from the patient to clinician is also a candid interview, right? Mm. We are not trained to perform. And if we are a very good con artist and perform, we should not be in this profession. We should be in the, you know, doing something else, right? Right, right. The reality of it is when you target the clinician with these questions that catch them off guard, yet they're important, and you open that portal of communication, then the clinician should be ready to tell you, rest assured that I have done X number of cases, or I do it very often, or I got, I was trained in this facility, I was trained under this person. And you may not know the name of the person or the facilities where they were training. Perhaps it's irrelevant at that point. But the reality of it, that if the doctor, you catch that doctor off guard, and it doesn't give you an immediate answer and has to research in the back of their mind what is it that they mm. have to tell you. Mm -hmm. Well, perhaps at that point, you have to continue to ask a line of questioning based, based on the experience of that clinician. Mm -hmm. Now, whereas the other questions that you should be asking is, what is your protocol to perform this procedure? And say, so, well, you know what? I got time right now. We can do it in, we can do it right now, you know? The reality of it is that <laughs> there are procedures that can be capitalized for the urgency of the procedure that we can do immediately, fine. But this is not one of those, mm. right? This is a procedure that involves planning. And the planning starts from the clinician being able to capture the jaw relationship with some model work, uh, to be able to capture some radiographic markings, perhaps if possible, a three-dimensional scan of your, of, your, of your bones. And through this planning process, 
and I'm not talking about digital planning. It's just actual planning that has to be done and coordinate with our technician, coordinate with the, the team of clinicians that are going to be treating you. So typically, it's not a, in a process that need to that could happen tomorrow all the time. In selective cases, it could, because all of a sudden you're wearing a denture, you have all the relationships checked, and you're ready. Yeah, we can go ahead and do it. But that is another aspect. Now, if you have undergone already some medical treatment for X or Y and C of your body, because you're treating a systemic condition or a blood pressure or things like that, and nobody in the team asks about your medical conditions or your mm. health history, that probably is gonna be the first red flag that I will see. So you have to make sure that the team or the clinician or whoever is gonna treat you have access and have reviewed your health history. And if you have heart disease, blood pressure, diabetes, and any other systemic condition that you may have, then make sure that you discuss that with them. Because in many cases, we can mitigate some of the risks by addressing those medical concerns ahead of time. <music>